Someone asked me in the comments if I thought it was a mistake buying the Forerunner to live in. Um, I'm assuming because it's such a small space. Um, when I started out living on the road, I lived in an Astro van. And then I went up to a extended uh, express van with my girlfriend and we had a high top. And then I went to a travel trailer. Uh, I think it was a 27 foot. So I progressively moved, you know, up in size. And this is the smallest vehicle I've ever lived in. And um, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I do. Um, for many reasons. Let's get into the positives first and talk about why I love this vehicle so much. It's super reliable. It's very capable off-road. Um, obviously, if I lift it and put bigger tires on it, some skid plates and a winch and stuff, that's going to help a lot. But as of right now, I've been in several situations where I thought for sure I was going to get stuck and this thing just pulled right through. It was amazing. This is awesome to drive on the road. I love operating machines. I love it. I love riding motorcycles, driving cars, riding lawn mowers, electric skateboards, anything with a motor on it. I love it. I love operating it. And I go on some really badass uh, bas back road, like twisty roads, and this thing kicks ass, dude. So this is the TRD off-road. It was actually called the trail the year it was made, but that's the current um, trim package. It's the second from the top. It's got all the good off-road stuff. And this one has this awesome system called KDSS. Is this crazy sway bar system. So when you're going around corners, it doesn't have body roll. It stays locked in. And it has pretty good for a truck, for an SUV, it has really good feel on the road. So I can slam these back roads, dude, and I can drive this thing like a car. I can drive it fast if I want to. And uh, the engine's fun. A lot of people complain about the power because it doesn't have a lot of low end torque. You've got to rev it out to get power. But I'm used to riding motorcycles, you know, inline four cylinders where you got to shift down a gear or two to get power out of it. And that's just the way it is. And it doesn't bother me one bit. I like it. When I go off-road, when I'm in the sand dunes or when I'm on the beach, dude, and I floor this thing, like, you can feel it kick in, and it's it's fun. I love it. It's exciting to drive. It's fun. The seat's really comfortable. It's got, you know, all the really nice amenities. Every single window, including the very back one, I can hard press, and they'll roll all the way down, or I can hard pull up, and they'll go all the way up. Every single one of them. It's amazing. It's got great AC, um, great stereo. Well, good stereo for stock. It's just a wonderful vehicle. It's very dependable. It's very easy to fix. It's simple and uh, it's very well made. Just an incredible machine. I love this Forerunner, man. Love it. But the space is very limited. I just spit on myself. That's disgusting. The space is super limited. Uh, everything is a pain in the ass. Taking my shoes off, uh, my, my passenger seat is occupied by my fridge. And uh, so that's that's out of the question. So my steering wheel is always kind of in my way and to take my shoes off is kind of a pain, dude. Changing my clothes is a pain. Getting into bed is a pain. Cooking really sucks. Um, I've got to find a spot where I don't feel like I'm being weird or something where I have privacy or like I'm vulnerable. I've got to have privacy and it's got to be dry. Uh, my awning broke, so that's kind of out and I don't think it's going to last. It was going to, I knew it was going to break soon because it's not, I'll make another video about that another time. But anyway, everything's a pain. And going into this, I knew that. I, that was, I knew it. My, my whole idea was I want to get out into nature. I have been working corporate jobs for the last six years. Before I start ranting about that, <laughs> um, I'm going to cut myself off. But I'm, I'm happiest when I'm out in nature. And when I'm with a small group of people and working corporate jobs and that structure does not work with my brain, I need to be out in nature as much as possible to stay sane. And um, I thought that, you know, if I can go places where other people can't go, I have a much better chance of being alone. And um, that hasn't really worked out. Uh, in Oregon, in the Portland area, all the places that are close by, you know, to go uh, camping out, you know, just like dispersed camping, they're almost always occupied or there's somebody like very close by that's shooting or there's like a tweaker close by. You know, I pass a couple spots where these people are in these rundown RVs and there's just garbage everywhere. And who knows if they're a meth lab or not. And there's just sketchy looking people out there. I just don't feel safe. And um, I'm not going to camp somewhere I don't, I don't feel safe. You know, whether that's a stray bullet or some tweaker trying to steal my stuff or just being out of their mind who knows what they're gonna do there's crazy people out there man um, so it's been really tough to find uh, you know camping out here and state parks are really hit and miss um, I had some great experiences 
in the winter time here and even the fall and the spring they close all the tent sites so you have to pay for the expensive rv sites and they're 32 bucks a night and that's that's a lot for a shower man 32 bucks and that adds up quick if you were to do that all the time and the misses are you know sometimes they're just packed or other times like last time this is such a this is such a side quest but it's kind of a funny story it's it's so ridiculous that it's funny um so I got this really nice spot at I got allergies my nose is so itchy sorry I got um I got this really nice spot like really close to the ocean and um I was feeling really good about it man I got there I hadn't gotten a good night's sleep in a while because I was parking on city streets and every time a car goes by it wakes me up and um I was like I just need a really good night's sleep so I I I got this spot at the state park and it was like nine o'clock. I'm sitting there next to my fire. So there's, there's my spot where my, I park my truck and then there's my fire pit. And then right next to my fire pit for some reason is the next campsite. Everywhere else was open. The only people I could see, there was one person all the way down at the, end of the other end of the loop. They were super chill, super quiet. I couldn't hear a thing from them. And there was another couple that in an airstream that uh, was pretty far away. I could just barely see them, couldn't hear them. I was like, this is great, man. I'm going to sleep so good tonight. I'm chilling out here. I'm listening to this like chorus of frogs. I can hear the wind coming through the trees. I can hear the, the ship's horns out in the Pacific Ocean, you know, out there. It was really nice. I was just really chilling and uh, just really feeling good. And then I think it was 9, 9.30. This couple pulls up in this minivan and I got two kids and they pull up and they're their music is really loud as they're pulling up. I'm like, oh God, here we go. And they, they pull up right next to me. And um, so their truck is like five feet away from, from me and it's dark and the kids are yelling. They've been cooped up in a car all day and they had a ton of energy and they just wanted to run and play and do what kids do, you know. And um, they left the car running with, so they could use the headlights to figure out how to set up their tent for the first time. And they left the music on, and their car was pretty loud. I think they had, like, an exhaust leak. And it stunk, too, because the exhaust pipe was, like, five feet from me. I'm sitting here, like, chilling in my fire, like, smelling, like, breathing this exhaust. And uh, they had to yell over the car so they could hear each other, try to set up this tent. And they're yelling at the kids the whole time. And it's like, man, some people have just, like, such a different idea of what camping is, like... To me, I, I just want to enjoy nature and be peaceful and chill. And other people, it's like, I guess it's just, I, I don't know. It's totally different from what my, uh, from what I want. <laughs> so they were super loud and then they left and they went to McDonald's and then they came back and they sat in their car for another hour and they were super loud again. And then they got up at like five or 6 a.m. and packed all their stuff up and just left. I was like, what? So really, there was only like two hours of them being obnoxious, and then the rest of the time they were, they were sleeping or they left. So it wasn't that bad, but that's kind of how state parks go, and uh, sometimes dispersed camping goes that way too. So my point is, I haven't had the best luck camping out of this thing, and my original idea of how it was going to go didn't really work out. My goal is to get to Arizona after the summer, once the weather's good, get down in the Sonoran Desert and photograph every species of rattlesnake in Arizona, 13 of them. And um, hopefully when I get out there, I'll have much better luck with the uh, you know camping off the grid and dispersed camping and hit up some amazing four-wheel drive trails. There are some crazy good trails out there. And uh, I've been to Brown's Camp out here. I've been in the sand dunes a little bit. I've been on the beach. I've been on a few other trails, done some other off-roading, and this it's so much fun. I love it, and this thing's really good at it. It's, it's really fun. I need a little lift kit. I need some, uh, I need some rock rails for the sides, and uh, I need some buddies, man. I need some friends to go with, because wheeling by yourself is really sketchy. You get stuck, you're just kind of, you're just stuck, you know? If you have a friend there, they can just pull you out. So anyway, that's my video, guys. I'll see you next time.